So in this lesson, we're going to see how to use Solver to solve optimization problems in Excel. First, you have to check if Excel has installed, uh, if you already have the Solver add-in, go to Data, go to the right and see if you see Data Analysis and Solver. You should be looking for Solver in this case. If you haven't, that means you haven't added it in. Very simple to do so. Go to File, go to Options, then go to Add-ins. Go down here to Manage Excel Add-ins and you should see something called Solver. While you're at this, you might as well add Analysis Tool Pack and Analysis Tool Pack VBA. Don't worry if you don't see the other add-ins because I do and you don't. So what we have here is, let's call it, you, let's do a revenue maximization problem. Let's call A the demand curve intercept. Let's make that 10. B is the absolute value of the demand curve slope. Let's for the time being make it 1. Price will then be equal to, of course, as we know, A minus B times Q. We'll just hang on to that for a second. And then, of course, let's make it, uh, well, to do that, let's say quantity, price, revenues, and capacity. In a previous lesson, you saw how to name where the cells. So let's actually name these things so that 10 would be A, 1 would be B, whatever values here would be Q, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. And, of course, you remember you go to formulas, you go to create from selection, the name is in the left column, say OK. And this now allows me to do the following. Let's say you have a quantity of 3. Therefore, price is going to be equal to A minus B times Q. Of course, you know, revenues are P multiplied by Q. And for capacity, let's give it any number. For the heck of it, say 3. You now want to choose the revenue maximizing quantity, perhaps subject to some constraint. What you want to do is you go to Data, go to Solver. When you bring up Solver, there are three major components. The first section is asking you, in which cell do I have the objective? There's only one objective in only one cell. Do you want to maximize, minimize, or reach a certain value for this, for what you're trying, what, what the objective is? What are your decision variables and what are your constraints? So let's start then. Your objective in this case is to maximize the revenue, so click on the cell containing revenues. Leave this as maximize by changing cells. Make sure the cursor is blinking here. Click on the cell containing quantity. So in Excel, down the road, we'll actually be doing lots of uh, variables. Here we only have one variable. Do we have any constraint? Well, let's make this an equality constraint problem for the heck of it. So go to the constraint section. You can add, change, or delete a constraint. Let's add a constraint. Another window pops up. This is one of the most powerful features of Excel. You can have any cell have any of these relationships with some other cell. So let's actually make quantity. Click on the cell containing quantity. Let's actually make it equal to the cell containing capacity. So it's telling me to maximize revenues, but make sure quantity is always going to be equal to capacity. And hit OK. In the latest version of Excel, you will notice that there's a section down here that says make unconstrained variables non-negative. That says bigger than or equal to zero. And now we should be able to solve this. When you solve it, what you'll get is, this is the good message. And bear with me for two seconds. Let's actually click on these reports, answer, sensitivity, and limits. And now press OK. And you will now see what it's actually done is, it's telling you that you told me to make quantity equal to 3. That's exactly what it's done. That's to maximize revenues. Uh, let's test if this is actually correct. Well, actually, before we do this, let's go back to the, uh, let's see what the reports tell you. Click on the answer report. It tells you that the original value of revenues was 21. After you did the optimization, it was 21. That's, of course, because we had 3 as a starting value. So, of course, the final value is 3. So let's go to sensitivity. You will then notice that it gives you these numbers right here. Uh, the reduced gradient is, in fact, just another word for the Lagrange multiplier on the non-negativity constraint. So remember, you said Q should be bigger than or equal to 0. But in fact, Q is equal to 3. Therefore, whatever the Lagrange multiplier was on the constraint Q should be bigger than or equal to 0, it obviously has to be equal to 0. Go to limits. And now you will notice that it gives you this over here. So it tells you that your objective is, in, after everything's done, is 21. But nowhere do you see something called Lagrange multipliers. 
This is a weakness of the latest version of Excel, that it doesn't report something called Lagrange multipliers. So here's what we're going to do. We're going to make, we're going to fool Excel into giving us the Lagrange multiplier. Make another cell, let's call it quantity, and make it always equal to whatever value you have for Q. In this case, of course, you click on this. Okay. Let's bring up Solver. Remember, the reason you're doing this is because you want to fool Excel into giving the Lagrange multiplier for the constraint that Q is equal to C. So delete this constraint. And now what you do is, just bear with me, add another constraint. But this time, instead of saying that the original Q cell was equal to capacity, you now make the other cell, which is always going to be equal to quantity. So whenever a solver changes this Q over here, you know that this quantity cell is also going to change. So make that now equal to capacity. Say OK. Press Solve. And of course, it gives the right answer again. But this time, try sensi answer sensitivity and limits. It will generate brand new reports. So let's go to answer report number two. You know, pretty much so obvious what it does. Does go to this thing and voila, you now have the Lagrange multiplier. So it tells you, you told me that Q should be equal to three. In the end, it was three. The Lagrange multiplier is almost four. In plain English, if you now said capacity quantity should be equal to let's say four, then the value of revenue should then change by approximately three point nine nine. And remember the way to do this is to artificially create another cell that always takes the same value as the decision variable, which was in this case quantity. And you tell Excel to put a constraint on that other cell containing quantity.